So every Snapdragon 865 device that will be released in 2020 will be a 5G device. So no longer will there be the Samsung Galaxy S11 normal and then the S11 5G or the OnePlus 8 whatever and the OnePlus 8 5G. Every single Snapdragon 865 device will be a 5G device. So if you want to find out more about that, please let me explain. Okay, so traditionally up until uh, now, the Snapdragon has included an internal integrated 4G modem. So the Snapdragon 855 had an internal uh, 4G modem. And then for 5G, if you wanted to move to 5G, you could add on the extra modem from uh, Qualcomm and that would then give you 4G and 5G. But now with the Snapdragon 865, there is no internal modem, not 2G, not 3G, not 4G. There's no internal integrated modem. You have to pair it with a Qualcomm Snapdragon X55 external modem. And again, when I mean external, I mean external on the motherboard, not something you plug in via USB or something. It's outside the chip, a different chip on the motherboard. But that's maybe some of you aren't happy about that. Maybe some of you will say, oh, that's terrible. But let's have a look at that and see what it means in terms of advantages and disadvantages. So the biggest complaint people will have is that an external modem outside of the processor on the motherboard actually is less power efficient because you have to go across the motherboard. There's some tracks, lines going across. You have to power up this separate chip. It needs its own power supply. And then of course, it's just gonna use more power than if it was integrated on the same silicon, on the same die as the actual processor. And that's absolutely true. But there are some plus points to actually using the external modem. So the real plus point that I can see is this. First of all, Qualcomm are saying the only way at the moment with today's technology, they could get the best performing 5G modem was to have it separate from the processor. And because this is a flagship device, so we're gonna talk in the next video about the Snapdragon 765, that's got an integrated 5G modem, but it's nowhere near as good as the external modem that you get with the Snapdragon 865. So if you want, top of the class performance, both from the processor and from the modem. The only solution that Qualcomm have at the moment is this external, these two chip uh, setup. But that actually does have some other advantages. So for example, with all that complicated new technology that's going into a 5G modem, if that was inside of the processor, maybe that would make the chip itself too big, more costly to manufacture there may be less space or it's harder to do all the routing and things internally in that chip for 5G when you've got the CPU and the GPU. And there's also the case of the heat that's being generated. Maybe there'll be too much heat generated there. It's better to have it in a slightly separate chip, which means the heat dissipation can be better. And as a result of using that external modem, you've got these great download speeds, 7.6 gigabits per second coming over that 5G modem. You've also got support for dual SIM. You've got support for standalone, not standalone. You've got support for dynamic spectrum sharing. You've got the support for a millimeter wave and all the sub six frequencies. So this is a real full fledged, I can do everything top of the range modem. And if you want all that top of the range, you have to have it external for this generation. Now, one thing I do want to describe quickly for you that you'll find in the X55 modem and also in the X52 modem that's in the Snapdragon 765 is dynamic spectrum sharing. Now, traditionally, when a new version of cellular technology has come out, 3G to 4G, for example, there was a whole new block of frequencies that needed to be allocated so that the 3G was running in this space over here and the 4G was running in this space over here. And that's actually true when we went from 2G to 3G and so on. And in fact, now with dynamic spectrum sharing, uh, cellular uh, companies can release 4G and 5G on the same uh, spectrum, on the same frequencies, which means now the spectrums can be shared. That's why it's spectrum sharing and it happens dynamically. So it's not like, well, we'll give this portion to this now, fix, chisel it in stone. It can happen dynamically so that 4G and 5G can coexist in the same frequencies. We don't have a whole worry about trying to purchase new frequencies and all the stuff that needs to go on. The uh, cellular providers, can, the telecom companies can do that now using uh, DSS and that's in the X55 and also in the X52 modem. Now going back to the efficiency thing for a moment, here's an interesting quote from Qualcomm. The 4G setup using the Snapdragon 865 and the X55 external modem, the 4G setup is more efficient 
than the 4G setup that was in the Snapdragon 855. So if you buy an 865 device and you use it on a 4G network, you'll actually get more battery life using that setup than you would have with the modem that was in the 855 because technology has progressed, they've made it more efficient, they're better at making it, and even though it's external, even with that external connection, it can still actually offer better 4G battery life than compared to the generation before. Of course, 5G probably is a bit more power hungry when it comes to doing all these different frequencies and things, but 4G is actually more efficient than what we had last time. So in that case, there's no downside to having the X55 as an external separate modem from the main processor, because if you, if you don't get 5G in your area, using it as a 4G phone will give you better battery life than the 855. Okay, so what does that mean? Bottom line, that means that every single Snapdragon 865 device will be 5G capable. Now that means, of course, that there is not gonna be a 5G version of, as I said earlier, the Samsung or the OnePlus or the LG or whatever, every single 865 device will be 5G capable. And even if you don't have 5G in your area, as a 4G modem, of course, it's top of the range and it's actually more efficient than the modem we had in the 855. So really, having this setup 5G for everyone, 4G for everyone is actually the best of both worlds. Okay, my name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Do stick around for my third video that I'm releasing all of these videos at the same time today. The third one will be about the Snapdragon 765 and the 765G. So that's it. I'll see you in the next one.